great start to the podcast. Woo! <clears throat> Take two. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Modern Skein podcast. My name is Sharon Graff and I am the owner of the Modern Skein, which is a yarn shop here in Montgomery, Texas. And I'm Becky, store manager at the Modern Skein. Welcome to the podcast. I normally don't start it off inhaling a bug or whatever it was that just happened. <laughs> Extra protein. Yeah, I mean, I am trying to increase my protein, but <laughs> preferably not that way. Um, anywho. <laughs> Save some room for Thanksgiving dinner. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of, happy Thanksgiving, because this should, fingers crossed, be live on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah. Maybe Friday. We'll see. Whenever you're watching it, yeah. hope you are about to eat or have eaten amazing food. That's what I look forward to. Yeah. Anyway, um, as you both, both. I hope there's as more you than both can tell. <laughs> I hope all there's two <laughs> of you. I hope there's more than two of you guys on here. <laughs> uh, that would be really sad. As you can see, I have a finished object that I'm wearing, and I'll show you guys the full ensemble here in a moment. We already showed, I think, your halibut yes. last week. Yes. But it's so good. It's you can, so good. Yeah. And it's, with it, I mean, it's, since mine's kind of a little bit on the cropped side and a little oversized, I still get enough airflow that even though it's, um, it's a stretch of sweater weather today, <laughs> um, I'm kind of fudging that line a little bit <laughs> with this one and it works. It's sweater for 30 minutes and then take it off weather. Yeah, that's what it is. I have a different shirt to change into later <laughs> for when this becomes yeah. too hot. Yeah. So, cheers. Cheers. We've got Wilder Love Coffee this morning. Yes, their new winter menu. If you're local, this is the Marion Oatsif. Ha, ha, ha. Rosemary uh, and oat milk latte. Very good. What? And I'm blanking on what mine's called. <laughs> Naughty or Spice. Naughty or Spice. Okay. Naughty or Spice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's delightful. Lots of warm spices. I think there's like a mulled wine. Yes. The mulled wine. Yes. Yours has the mulled wine syrup. So good. And then there's the new one that they came out with that I almost got today, which was their that one's cold the red. brew. Yeah. Red Rider? Red Rider. Yeah. Uh, cold brew and rosemary syrup and something else that sounded really, really good, too. But I went with this one. I had to try it. <clears throat> so if you're local, go check them out. They aren't in walking distance anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. They did have to move, but they're not that far away, especially mm -hmm. if you're coming in. They're only four miles down 2854, if you know where that is, or just look them up. You can see where they are, and yeah. you can Google map it. Mm -hmm. Much easier than me trying to tell you, go for it at miles down 1480, <laughs> uh, 2854. And, and when you pass the safety directions podcast, <laughs> when, you, you <laughs> when you go past the orange safety cones, turn right. Yeah. Just pretty much what you do. But yeah. yes. Or if you start to see the orange safety cones coming the other direction, you're going to hang a left. Real quick. Anyway, let's get back to knitting because that's actually – this isn't a coffee podcast. This isn't a direction podcast. It's I mean, not a weather podcast. I mean, the amount of coffee we consume, though. Uh, true. Anyway. We could be coffee snobs. Okay. Let's – I mean, I am probably. But yeah. – so this is my finished Douglas cardigan by Andrea Mowry. It's so good. I knit mine out of shelter. Um and I knit the smallest size. So I still have, I mean, I still have positive ease, but I do not have the, what is it, 20 some odd inches of positive yeah, ease? I think it was like 10 to 16 inches. Yeah. So I have probably, especially like around the bust area, because it does, it goes narrower at the hip and wider mm -hmm. up here. Um, I would say I probably have like six to eight, roughly. I haven't measured it exactly, but you can yeah. see. If I hold my arms out there, you can kind of see the shape. This is a really, I hope it doesn't screenshot on that. That's really weird. <laughs> As you can see, my ends are not woven in. 
And I will say the sleeve, when I was knitting it, I was concerned the sleeve was gonna be too tight, but I gave it a little as I'm block, wet blocked it last night. Mm -hmm. By the way, when you wet block shelter, it turns, it blooms, it's just, it the becomes. The stitch texture now, I mean like, it's not like it was, not to say it was bad before, but like the no. stitch texture now, looking at it also is just like so nice and crisp and wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it softens up mm -hmm. beautifully. So anyway, I love it. I did everything according to directions, except for really two things. One, the pattern is technically written for Aaron weight. Uh, no, it's not. The other direction. DK weight. <laughs> DK weight. I use shelter, which is a worsted weight. So that's why I knit the smallest size. And then because I also knit on the looser side, I did go down one needle size for every recommended. Um, so let's just say it's, it called for seven, I went to a six or vice versa. Um, I did not do the buttons. So I did the button bands, but I did not put button holes. Um, my thought is if I decide I want some sort of closure on it, I will use a jewel closure clasp, um, which we have in the store actually. We have them right here. Yep. Yeah, you could use like one of the little silver ones. Could totally do, yeah these like leather I think that would be cool these leather clasps down the front especially since I did mine in black that would be really fun y'all it's a little early to be calling yeah phone's ringing if you can't hear that <laughs> yeah anywho we'll, we'll, we'll get to give you later. Them a call back in a, in a few minutes <laughs> so I did the other thing I did not do I guess that's technically three things so technically the color that is on the button band and on the cuffs and here should not be repeated in the main body. It should be its own colorway. That phone is still ringing. <laughs> and advance to that rhythm. <laughs> uh, so I, instead of five colors, I did four and I repeated the color that I used um, on the button band in the stripe sequence. So you can see. I felt like that, I, I mean, it's not an original idea. I totally stole this whole idea off of another lady on Inst uh, no, well, Instagram Ravelry who did the same thing. She did it in shelter. She just did different colors. Yeah. Um, I love it. I would totally knit again. Shelter is my newest favorite. Mm -hmm. I feel like every time I knit with a yarn, it becomes my new favorite. Yeah. But shelter is amazing. It blocks out so beautifully. It's soft. I have no problem wearing it all up in here. It's soft. It's not scratchy. Um, I wear it next to skin. It's totally fine. If you have uber, uber, uber sensitive skin, you might want to wear a tank top underneath it or a turtleneck or something like that. But you know if you have sensitive skin or not. So, you know, if mohair or something like that bothers you, this may probably bother you as well. Just kind of give that as your yeah. rough guide. And then I think the only other mod, you didn't include the pockets that the True. pattern calls for. I did. I guess I really modified it. <laughs> a heck of a lot. You, you said not. I only did two mods, and I was like, Shannon, <laughs> you did like four or five, That's but true. it's great. So I did leave out the pockets. So when it came to the line to do the pockets, I just skipped right over that. So... There's no pockets. I feel like it's a bit cleaner. And also for me and for how I wear sweaters, my body type, my torso length, I guess, all the above in any of the patterns when Andrea Maury puts in pockets, they're like up here and I'm like this T-Rex arms with my pockets. And so I, <laughs> Again, I hope that. that that is the thumbnail. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I left off the pockets. If you uh, go back to one of the episodes where I'm wearing my Winter's Beach cardigan, you can see the kind of weirdly high pockets that were on that. And this would have hit the exact same spot. So anyway... Um, yeah, so this has been blocked. Everything is done, except I need to weave in my ends. So maybe this afternoon, maybe not. We'll see. Okay. Uh, while we're still on the topic of shelter, I wanted to say all the colors that I use, I know we were 
almost out of all of these. We have now been fully restocked. Yes. This is cast iron for the black, pumice for the light uh, gray. The grayish blue is faded quilt. And then this kind of browny gray. I'm blanking. That one's that storm? It's storm cloud. Storm yeah. cloud. Storm cloud. Yep. Um, so those colors have all been restocked, and we also got in a couple new colors as well. We also restocked some of the other ones yes. that were getting very low. This is Meteorite. So if you love the idea of having a dark button band, but you don't like black, this mm -hmm. is like the most yummy chocolate, dark chocolate brown. But it so has many flex. Yes. It has Good. like the rainbow of flex inside. So pretty. So this is Meteorite. This is Suit. So you can see it's kind of between, it's darker than pumice, lighter than cast iron, and grayer than the faded quilt or storm cloud. So it's like a, a charcoal gray is what I would call it. So soot, soot, S-O-O-T. Uh, then we got the fossil that was back ordered. So if you're looking for cream, perfect, yummy, yummy I'm, cream. I'm a little obsessed with this color. It sits right at the end of the display by the computer at the register and I stare at it all day thinking, oh, I need to cast something on with that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Willpower has held. But That's what happens in a yarn shop. Yeah. Uh, and this is Bale. So Bale is a really pretty, um, I would call this like haystack butter yellow kind of combination so it has the tan kind of weedy colors and then it also has a little bit of a brighter more buttery yellow but it's not a bright bright yellow at all so if you're like one of those people i can wear some yellows but not all of them this is probably the yellow that you can wear um so like i said that's been added to our beautiful wall of shelter um, we also, of course, have all of our Arbor from Brooklyn Tweed as well, so be sure and check it out. Yes. What have you been working on? Do you have a finished object? I don't. I came Ooh. really close, though. Why don't you share those finished objects? Okay, though? we'll do this. Faux finished objects. I mean, they're really finished objects. They're just yes. not knit by her. I did not knit them. That's okay. Um, they're new store samples. Yes. Uh, okay, we'll go with this one because it came into the shop first. So this one is the Montana Mountain Cowl. I think that is the first time I remembered that name. <laughs> I wanted to call it the Mountain Mama Cowl, and that's not what it is. Every time I started to search for it on Ravelry. Mountain Mama. Nope. No uh, such item found. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is patterned by Andrea Mallory. It was knitted up in the... Four, no, three, four, four. New colors, mm -hmm. plus um, one of the fall colors from Red Stag Fiber. So it's a really fun slip stitch, kind of mosaic knitting. Uh, Mulligan is the first colorway, and that's the main color throughout all of this. That's that nice kind of light, creamy beige. So if you're familiar with the Red Stag colors, it's basically in between the lightness of antique linen and Aberdeenshire. It yeah. kind of falls right in the middle if you were doing a fade. So it's mm -hmm. really, really pretty. So when antique linen's a little too white or gray, yeah. this is a really good, good yeah. option. And then this just rotates through a pattern of the other four colors. Um, the uh, only the only one that's not new is the brown, and that's the Dunedian from fall collection yeah. the chocolate brown this is more land the uh -huh. green it's kind of between um karen gorm st andrews and gloss kind of a medium tone this one the holly berry so holly berry is lighter than great hall but not as it doesn't have the orange undertone that red stag does yeah. And this new blue, this is Mar. So this is really, it's obviously it's a lighter blue than Her Majesty's Navy, but it's darker than any of the other blues. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly feel like it pairs best with French waistcoat. Like yeah. if you do, a, if you want to fade, like French waistcoat, Mar, and Her Majesty's Navy. Uh, because it has zero 
teal like undertones to it. Yeah, it almost leans more towards like the like kind of periwinkle like mm-hmm. purple undertones. If you put it next to a purple, it. it really pulls purple. If you don't, it's not going to really. Yes. But if you do pair it with purple, it really pulls really nicely. Yeah. Um, we do have them. So the sample is knit in estate fingering, and we have them on estate fingering. Um, we also have them on a state DK, but we're already out of the Hollyberry on a state DK, and we're getting low in the other colors. And it'll probably be like four weeks before we get another batch in, just FYI. So if you really love it, go snag it ASAP. And then the second sample, um, I should say also, if these were both knitted by two wonderful customers and regulars. Yes. This was knitted by Connie. Hi, Shout Connie. Shout out to Connie. I think you watch. <laughs> um, and then we've got the Garter Snake Hat, um, which the pattern is by Lavanya Patricella, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Got it. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's such a cute pattern. Um, it goes from nice two-color brioche to just kind of a garter that is slowly increasing as you knit in the round. Let's see if I It's pretty reversible really yeah. the hat. Um so I don't know if that helps to show kind of what's happening yeah, with let me that. Put it on my head. That'll that's a great option. This one so, doesn't fit my head, so I don't have that choice. <laughs> so this is like one side where you've got the the lighter color because yep. this is Mar and the what is it? More uh mulligan. mulligan. And then this is the the more blue side. I personally like this side better. I technically think this is the wrong side showing, but. I like the contrast of this side a whole lot. So you can see it goes like down. Yeah, there you go. Now you can kind of see it better. I've been twisting my head very (laughs) strangely on the podcast, but. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely more of a beanie style, Mm -hmm. but it's cute. Yeah. There's also a matching um, cowl pattern available if you like the pattern, but you're like, I don't wear hats. Mm-hmm. There's a cowl. Again, this is the estate fingering. And this was knit by Kathy. Yeah. Hi, Kathy. <clears throat> so that is, that's the new colors from Red Stag, the two new samples. Yep. Um... So I guess now we move on to whips. Yes. And this really should have been a second finished object for me. <laughs> I'm like that close. But I had to rip out one of my sleeves and re-knit it. Mm. And then I didn't end up knitting as much last night because I was tired. And I went to bed after I prepped Thanksgiving food. So this is... The Magnolia Bloom by Camilla Vaud. This looks so good, you guys. Um, so Magnolia Bloom was designed to be technically, excuse me, I have the hiccups. Technically was two strands of fingering and two strands of mohair. That's four strands. That's a lot of yarn management. Uh, so what I did was a strand of DK and a strand of Surrey. And this fabric, you guys, I wish you could touch it. It looks like a cloud. It feels like a cloud. It feels like a soft bunny's butt. It feels... (laughs) I mean, I laugh, but that's the most accurate thing. I mean, find the softest pet that you could have, and this is what it feels like. It's so yummy. So I did a strand of Estate Decay in Castle Rock. So it's that light gray. Mm-hmm. And then I paired it with a strand of, and this is red stag fiber. I paired it with a strand of Sharon's Palette on the Surrey. You guys, oh my gosh. Is this not like the most me sweater you ever saw ever? <laughs> it's gray, it's taupe, taupe, taupe. 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 <laughs> taupe to the morning to ya. <laughs> Excuse me. It's taupe and blue and navy. It's perfect. Um, also, the um, 
stitch patterning and the lace and the little nubby baubles, which are the best baubles ever. Um, and I'm not saying that sarcastically. I legitimately mean that. Anyway, um, only pattern modifications that I have done is I did not knit it quite as long as she said. Um, I was shooting for this to be not a crop top, but just skimming the top of my hips. And then I'm doing just below the elbow sleeves. Um, and I'm not doing the sleeve decreasing when I switch to ribbing. Because here it would be kind of weird to have like a poofy elbow thing. Um, so I'm just doing basic straight sleeves. So I'm on my second sleeve. I should be done today unless I get super distracted with cooking, but it should be done today. I love it. It's so soft. Oh, and no, I don't have my own palette of colors. I mean, this is basically my favorite. It's so good though. It's so snuggly. It's been on my list for a while and I had planned on doing it just out of mohair, uh, or not just mohair. <laughs> Uh, but mohair, and I think I was going to do it with Scout, but honestly, I think I have to do it out of Surrey now because it's so fluffy. It is. Um, I am knitting the 44 size, 44-inch uh, bust. This is my third skein of DK. It'll be more than enough to finish the sleeve. This is actually my second skein of Surrey, so I will have easily gotten away with two skeins of Surrey. Even if I wanted to do long sleeves, three and two would have been fine for me. Um, just be aware when you're picking. <coughs> the rush. <coughs> My hair fuzz. <coughs> Excuse the me. The hazards of being in the yarn <laughs> shop. Yes. Um, so just be mindful when you're picking your uh, yarn. You may not need as much as the directions call for because I pulled put aside four skeins of Surrey. Um, based on gram weight, I'm clearly not needing that for my size. And I'm going to choke again. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay. <coughs> well, <laughs> um, <coughs> I also should have had a finished object <laughs> today, but I basically got home and I knitted for like 10 rounds and then put it down. Um, and dug through all of my active projects. It was, it was a good mess, but it was a mess. <laughs> um, but I am almost done with my, uh, test knit that I am working on. Um, yeah, I am on also the second sleeve island. It's a great place to be. Yep. And I think, I think I've done six. I'm shortening my sleeves. Um, because I wanted more of a bracelet length, three quarters to bracelet length, and I think it's working out to be, like, I think the other one falls right about here, um, because I push up my sleeves, clearly. Um, I do too. Yeah, so I am shortening it, and so I'm just doing my, um, I think I'm doing nine, maybe eight increases, um, and I've done like six of them. So I am obnoxiously close to finishing it, um, and I will hopefully have it done today because I have cast on plants. Random, but there's nothing worse in the world than getting like your sleeve wet. I legitimately hate that. That's why I, you come in here and see me like, even if I have like yeah. the fanciest button up, like when I was in the corporate world, I rolled up my dress shirts. I rolled up my suit jackets because I hated, I just hate, I just did it. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. I don't know why, but I do. <clears throat> yeah. So this is almost done. I don't know when this pattern is releasing. It's been a pretty chill test knit. So I think technically the original deadline has already passed, but there's a good portion of us that aren't <clears throat> done yet. I imagine if it's chill, she might wait till December to, I think so. to release it. I think so. <clears throat> That's going to be really fun. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, I did cast on a vacation knit because I was away I'm with so family. I haven't seen this yet. Oh, that's right. You haven't. I didn't pull it out yesterday. So this is a new to us yarn that I'm trying to think. 
Okay, this will be coming out, well, depending on when UPS arrives at our shop. It should be for sure by Saturday here at the shop. Let's just say that. <clears throat> just in case, you know, I don't know. Sometimes deliveries don't get here when, when we like for them to. Yeah. We had a delivery window yesterday that <laughs> was like 8.30 to 11.30. Yep. We uh, arrived at about 4.30 yesterday. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, so this will be a new to us yarn. I will share a little bit of details, but look at this, you guys. Look how fluffy. It's so fluffy. And if you could feel this, it's like super light. Yeah, I'm going to squish it because I haven't even. Squish it. Oh gosh. Yes. So you guys, <laughs> this is Billow. Mm. And so Billow good. is from Shibui. And it's actually been out for a little while. Um, there was just some miscommunications in our order. It wasn't lost, but it got delayed. <clears throat> Anywho, Billow is a, they're billing it as a DK weight. It is 41% cotton. So it's a cotton and merino core. So 41% cotton, 24% merino for the core. And then it's blown 35% baby alpaca. So you have this lightness and floofiness, but then you also have the white kind of cotton core and you have a little bit of that cotton feel to it. I will say this is one time where I do wish I would have used wooden needles. It is because of the cotton and the alpaca, it is a bit slippery. Um, so just be mindful of that. Either use like the prim ergonomic needles or hooks or use some likey or bamboo um, needles would be my, just to save you any frustration. I've slipped a bunch of stitches off of this. Um, but the project that I'm working on is called the, is this the summit? Summit, yes. The summit cowl. And the summit cowl is a three, it's a color blocked cowl so it's three panels so I'll have the abyss this is the abyss colorway then pollen and then the ivory on top and it's a cowl that kind of is a funnel shape so it lays really nice I'm trying to see if I have a picture yes I do <clears throat> so you can't really tell the three colors in this one but it's three colors um, originally designed in silk cloud held double um, but if you use Billow, you don't have to hold anything double. So that's a fun thing. That'll be a free pattern uh, with purchase of the Billow once we get it in the shop. You guys, it's just so like airy and nice. So what I'm looking forward to this, um, because like I said, it does have some cotton in it as well. It's not going to be too hot. And I will say, like, I feel like it's fluffy, but it doesn't have a huge halo on it. Mm -hmm. I think the cotton core really helps kind of trap a lot of the extra halo-y bits. Um, it's gonna be so nice. Um, there's some new patterns coming out in Billow. There's already several shawls and things like that, but there's some new stuff coming out as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, oh, let me show you. I... So that's the pollen, and then this is the ivory. That's gonna go on top. There's a solid chance some of that might come home with me because I've had uh, Samantha Garen's Alder Grove on my list for a while. Yeah. But there wasn't anything like comparable here mm -hmm. in the shop um, to that cotton alpaca alpaca blend that I think it calls for. Yep. So yeah, there will that be. might be happening. <clears throat> and yes, it is definitely listed as a DK weight, <coughs> depending on your needle size. I just got something in my mouth. Um, You're just getting all the fluff today. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, um, you could use, you could probably get sport gauge as well if it's a bit denser. Um, or, you know, you know what would be really pretty out of that? A ranunculus. Because mm -hmm. you have the cotton to make it really light. Oh my God. Can you imagine doing a... You could just like hold like another Shibui, like reed or cone or mm -hmm. like 
Twig. I want to say Twig. Mm-hmm. Twig would be good. I struggle with the names of Shibui for whatever reason. <laughs> They're very s- simple. They're very Stick straightforward, <laughs> but I can't remember them. Um, yeah, but I think holding that like and doing it, and I just be so. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I would actually do what I would actually do is pebble because pebble is cotton, um, and it has a very the texture would be I won't say similar, but the texture would pair with that so pretty, so nicely. Um, <clears throat> fun fact, if you go on our website or come in store, there have been a few more colorways of Shibui been discontinued on several ba- on across the bases. So we have added a little bit more Shibui to our sale section. The discount is automatic if you pull up any of the Shibui products and you select the color from, we have it that says colorway discontinued so you can see it and the discount is automatically applied. Yeah. Um, those colorways, some of the old ones were Twilight, Caffeine, um, the green one, I can never, I want to say it's lime, but it's not Apple? Lime. Apple. Um, and then new, the Julie Hoover colors, so Bordeaux and Paloma also were discontinued, um, yeah. that and we it's... have, we have that on Lunar, we have it on Nest, um, I think we still have some of it on the Mohair. Um, some of the <clears throat> linen blends. So anyway, check that lots, out if you're interested. Lots. You know, Shibui doesn't really go on sale except when they discontinue their colors. So definitely snag that. I have uh, like garment quantities um, or large project quantities and a lot of the colors available. So don't worry about that. Um, I think there's only one or two that I only have like two skeins of. So yeah. plenty. <clears throat> um what else? Oh, what else have you been working on or look, thinking about working on but haven't really uh, worked on? Well, this one I'm real excited about, so I'm going to go Ooh. with this. Because I'm yes, to get on today. <laughs> and I just saw that. The, the big baby. The big baby. The big baby. Speaking of we talking about ranunculuses, <laughs> this one yeah. I'm putting is jumping on the needles. This is going to be a reward to myself. Once this sweater is done, I'm going to cast this on as a ranunculus. This is the Chelsea Lux duet. I'm missing the label now, but um, yes. that was from the yarn trail. Mm-hmm. We had an Inza trunk show. Is that the so. eucalyptus? Uh, succulent no, garden. Succulent garden, yes. Yes. So this will be my ranunculus. Um, I'm going to wind. I have several things I brought in to wind up today because <laughs> I was like, I need to, I need to cake things up and feel like I'm making progress even though I've just got some giant projects that need attention. Hey, <clears throat> lots of knitting time tomorrow. Yes. Potentially. Yes. Depending on how much you have to cook. I think thankfully most of my stuff is going to be easy. Um, but I'm going to cast on this this afternoon um, and I'm going to try and do, I've tried every year um, to do the Andrea Mowry sock knit along fall like challenge um where you try and knit a pair of socks in like four days uh we're gonna see if i can do it don't know if i can but we're gonna try it um that is gonna be a yummy combo so i stashed dove um and ended up grabbing there's a lot of dog hair on this <laughs> there is excellent this has been in my stash for years <clears throat> i think this is actually from wc like oh wow for yeah just the malabrigo nice brown sock yarn and then this is explore knits and fibers big bend colorway Mm. so this is going to be my like variegated in place of where i think andrea calls for a spin cycle oh that's gonna be pretty so it'll get some subtle variegation in there with the contrast of that dark brown and i'm ready yes very excited um let's see what else do i have um i don't think it i don't think i'd cast this on oh there's josh's charger (laughs) we were when we were packing up from our trip i apparently threw his charger in my knitting bag that's fun um almost pulled stitches off my needle i love this yes so 
I didn't, I would, I had not cast this on or even thought about it, I don't think. I finally cast on Pressed Flowers. So Pressed Flowers, since it came out, has been in my queue. It's been one of those projects where it's like, I just want to do it, but I don't know what colors I want to do. And then the perfect colors literally jumped off the wall at me. And I said, I must do, cast this on. So I've only, I haven't gotten very far, but I'm well into the pattern repeat. So it's pretty mindless at this point. Um, once I finish my Magnolia Bloom, I'm going to head back to this for sure. Um, it's a nice DK weight project. Really simple. Slip stitches, some increases. Um, if you're not familiar with slip stitches, I feel like this is a really good pattern to try it because you have a very well written chart that you can follow along with the written out row by row instructions. That's really nice. So you can like use one to learn the other and vice versa. Um, if you are needing, sorry, people are texting me in my family group chat. Okay. <clears throat> if you're needing, um, like help deciphering what you're supposed to do. You can have the chart to kind of see what it should look like, plus follow along the written instructions. So I feel like anytime you're learning something new as far as like the stitch patterning like this, if you have the option of using a pattern where it has the chart and the written instructions, I feel like you can use them both to kind of learn everything. Because in the long run, if you can read a chart for your knitting that goes that much faster yeah that much easier and when you read a chart you're literally learning how to read your knitting so you can then look at this and like i already know what i got to do on the next row and when you start doing it if it doesn't line up like the chart you know you boo-booed so yep. you can back it out um so i really encourage chart reading um but having both lets you be able to learn how to do it yeah. kind of on your own because it's people are like well teach me how to read a chart you can't really it's hard to teach it because it's it's something you have to almost I don't want to say learn on your own but it is very much a everybody's brain is wired a little bit differently on how they read their knitting yeah. um, and reading their knitting and reading a chart is very much the same if you can do one you can usually do the other um, yeah. So you kind of, you, I feel like it's, it's a, you got to figure out it's how that, to do it on your own. Yeah. I think it's the thing. You've got to have that like light bulb moment mm -hmm. and like we can explain how we have that light bulb moment, how it makes sense, but mm -hmm. it may not connect to you at all. Yeah. And so it, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you got to try it, make a few mistakes. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Don't be afraid of making yeah. mistakes. Especially, I would say, especially if you're local or have a local yarn shop near you, mm -hmm. don't be afraid to make a mistake. Yeah. If it's a good yarn shop, you should be able to take it in and be like, I made a mistake. I don't know what, where, how, when, or why. Yeah. Help me. Yeah. And they should, if they're, if it's a good yarn shop, they'll be able to either point you in the right direction, get you in touch with a teacher or fix it or show you mm -hmm. how to fix it. Um, so obviously if you don't have a local yarn store near you slightly harder but youtube is amazing youtube is amazing and so are lifelines <laughs> yes pop lifelines. in a lifeline mm -hmm. and then do the thing that you're not sure about and if you don't know how to do a lifeline youtube it yep because <laughs> it's very it's a cyclical like <laughs> circle of advice yarn store youtube make a mistake youtube y yarn, yarn store, store. <laughs> yes <laughs> it goes in a big circle yep anywho this is Back to the actual knitting. This is pressed <laughs> flowers. <laughs> Squirrel. And the colorway is leopard for, uh, by Chelsea Lux for my flowers, so my background color. And then my my main color is technically a Jacobite Rebellion from Red Stag Fiber. But if you wanted to replicate it, um, Borjo um, is... The, it is what it is. It's just, it was slightly off, and so he really wasn't comfortable selling it as Bordeaux. So I snagged it. Yeah. It's so good. In fact, we, we may say, even have. Yeah. We've got a. We've got oh, we only have two left. of them. Yeah. Mm. And you need three Maybe. for this one. Yeah. Unless you were going to make it smaller. So. Yeah. I mean. You do that. So uh, this is um, Pressed Flowers, like I said, by Amy Christophers, I think. Could yes. be wrong. I'm pretty sure that's right. I'm, it's savory yeah. knitting, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, why don't you share your your shallography? Ah, uh, yes. Shallography. I let this guy uh, languish for a bit while I finished test nets. But I'm almost done with the last test net that is currently on my plate. And now mm -hmm. I'm sitting down to try and finish things slash cast on things that I've been wanting to cast on. See, my ratio is cast off one, cast on four. Right? I mean, that's probably going to be pretty accurate <laughs> what I'm going to do here very soon. <laughs> kind of what I felt like when I finished Shawlography. It's like, must cast on all the things. But I've actually finished quite a few things. I finished the Driftlines Cowl. I finished my Douglas Cardi. I'm about to finish the Magnolia Bloom. So I am in bobble land. Um, I tried to pick this up and start doing bobbles last night, and I got through like four, and I was like, okay, I'm over it. Also, dog hair, lots of it. This is my life. <laughs> um, but I am, yeah, I am still in clue two. So if you are still <laughs> muddling through, you're not alone. Uh, There's actually quite a few people on Clue 2. Yeah. Clue 2 was a bear. It was a lot. This is a lot of knitting in Clue yeah. 2. Um, and I was already a little bit behind, so it just, that was it. <laughs> uh, but I am most of the way through that row, and then I will get to start on my short row, like, wings, mm -hmm. um, and go from there. <clears throat> I keep contemplating what I'm going to do with my border. Part of me is like, we should just knit the stripes. Just do the stripes, Becky. Um, and then I keep seeing other beautiful modifications. And I yeah. kind of like, but you could do this. <laughs> it's true. So we'll see. I'm still a ways off before I get to that border point anyway. So, um, yeah, my goal is to have this done before the end of the year, which I think I can do, um, especially once I get a couple of these projects squared away and get a couple of Christmas knits polished off. So. Yeah. Awesome. Sorry, I was just looking at my next whip <laughs> and seeing something that I'm probably going to rip back. Maybe. Oh, no. I think that's where I spit spliced it. Oh, but yeah. the stitch gauge is wonky on that. that looks yeah, really that's weird. real weird. Anywho. Interesting. This is my Luxpress. Uh, by um, Espas Trico. Yep. Um, I am knitting mine out of Double Sunday. I love the fabric. It's amazing. However, the one reason why I kind of paused this one for a hot second is my row gauge is quite a bit different than what she did. So if I knit the amount of rows before doing the split for sleeves, it will be very um swancho like and i'm not really looking for that so honestly what i'm probably going to do especially since i just found that little blurby thing somewhere in here i'll probably rip back and kind of recalculate how many plain knitting rows i do between my increases um to account for my difference in gauge because i i'm still looking for this to be just a slightly i don't want to say fitted but a more of like a body skimming sort of fit um, and not a big loosey goosey poncho swancho with bleh, bleh. yeah that makes sense so um again Luxpress free pattern knitting out of double sunday but if you do that just be aware that your row gauge most likely if it, you're like me will be slightly off um so I think technically I'm supposed to knit another like 40 some rows before splitting and it's only supposed to be eight inches from here to here yeah and I'm like at nine I think I haven't yeah. actually measured but I'll I'll sit down and do math you know I made sure in high school to always find a profession to get into that required the least amount of math as possible. However, I have failed miserably because my <laughs> my first profession was gemology. 
There's a math. lot of math involved with that. And my husband is calling me right now. Sorry, Josh. And, and we're back. back. <laughs> Josh, that is all on you. But that's okay. Because you, you edit it. So you can fix it. Yay. Anywho. And we are yeah. nearing the point of yeah. needing to open anyway. <laughs> we are a little long-winded today. So we'll kind of wrap this up. We don't. I don't have any more whips. Do you have another cast on the show? Anyway, I what I was. that I'm going to cast on, but. They can wait. Next episode. Next episode. When they're actually cast on. Yep. Um, what was I saying about the L Express? Oh, math. Math. Profession. Yeah. There's a lot of math in gemology school. Luckily, there's not too much in event planning. And then knitting. There's a lot more math than you think. Um, mm-hmm. Just a PSA. I have find a good math teacher. Yep. It's always good. Um. Real quick, I want to talk about, yes, let's talk about these. So um, this is new in the shop. They're amazing. This is the West Yorkshire Spinners Sock Signature 4-ply. So these are, they're like a self-striping? They're a self-striping and self patterning kind of yarn yeah. uh, similar to like a Regia Sockmeyer kind of on that end so it's a 75% wool 25% nylon super sturdy um, it does contain at least 35% BFL blue face luster um, these are just gorgeous so this is mallard these are also perfect you guys if you're looking for a quick travel project or yeah. whatever if you knit socks Come in, grab a ball of this, grab your needles, go on your road trip. That's it. It's easy. Uh, especially with the holidays or if you just want like a little project you can have lying around while you, you know, talk with family or friends. Mm-hmm. Great. This is pheasant. This one's really pretty. What do you have? Uh, these are the three new ones that came in yesterday. Oh, yes. Um, so <clears throat> on that note, because we've got a couple of the bird ones, mm-hmm. uh, wood pigeon, which is really nice and soft. I like that one. Um and I think a lot, most of the, I think all of the bird ones are going to do, I think it's Country Birds is the collection. Ah. Um, but all of them are going to do the almost pseudo Fair Isle mm-hmm. um, patterning. Mm-hmm. Which Definitely. is where you, you can kind of see the little, like, a, like short blips of color in mm-hmm. there. So you're going to get, like, one, two stitches yeah. out of that. This is Goldfinch. Real pretty. Mm-hmm trying to find out this is bullfinch yep. all the finchy owl really nice neutrals. oh that is pretty that's great for guys too yeah this one also be good for guys this is blue tit mm-hmm. mm, two of the more vivid ones kingfisher really bright and peacock oh yeah peacock's always nice and then there's christmas ones christmas this is vintage tinsel. So this one's going to be just a sparkly um, self-striping. Really, really pretty. No fair isle patterning in that one. Yep. Silent Night. Again, got some Stellina in there. This is going to just be stripey. And then Hollyberry, which is going to do that kind of fair isle mm-hmm. patterning throughout. We had, I guess we sold out of the other Christmas There were one. two other ones. I think like Candy Cane, maybe? Mm. Yeah, and I think fairy we lights. sold out of, yeah, I remember fairy lights. I think we sold out of all those. Yeah. Um, but on the Christmas side of things, yep. if you are interested in knitting some Christmas balls, we have now stocked the Arnie and Carlos 55 Christmas balls to knit. Um, there's also, so it's, it is ornaments, but they also t- show you how to create center pleats. Pe- Pieces, center pieces, center pieces, wreaths, and window dressings out of it. Super fun. This is a really great book. And you get all those motifs. So you could easily turn the motifs into placemats, into put them on mittens, put them on a hat. Yeah. You know, you can do lots of different things with these um, charts and illustrations. So that's a great one. And then, oh yeah, share that. <laughs> this Already has took nothing my home. to do with Christmas. But I'm excited because it's a book about pizza. And you may be saying, but I thought y'all have a yarn shop. <laughs> and it's true. But we also have a genuinely love for food. And this happens to be um, 
published by Lina Magazine yep. or Lina Publishing, who publishes like 52 Weeks of Sock, the Lina Magazine, Worsted, all that fun stuff. And Food with Friends is another one of their foodie yeah. publications, and we stock that. And then I this is just, oh. can we just look at that? Yum. So there is legitimately because I went through it yesterday how to make everything from like pizza dough from scratch to your toppings to drinks to serve <laughs> with your pizza oh different ways to cook pizza if you don't have a pizza oven specifically for it um my favorite and i noticed it was in there because i discovered this on instagram um but cooking your pizza in a cast iron skillet mm -hmm. which is amazing you get that crisp yeah. Mm. Yeah. so this is also great if you have if you're a knitter and you shop here, but you have non-knitting friends, which we all do, it's unfortunate, but you know, not everyone's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I mean, non-crafty friends, you know, <laughs> but maybe they love pizza. Grab them a book. Your holiday uh, gift list just got yeah. shorter. We also have candles and a few other things that are great mm -hmm. for non-crafters. Also, hyper knitting book. And if I feel like I'm talking faster, I probably am because we do need to genuinely open the store in a hot second. We got a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so Hibernating 2 by Stephen West. We have the physical book yep. available. We also still have a few copies of Hibernating 1 um, somewhere, I think in the front. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we have those available uh, now. We also have the new volume three Shetland wool journal. So all of my Shetland TV show fans and just Shetland Fair Isle lovers in general, grab book three. We also got a restock of book one and two. Back in with the hiccups. Um, so you can complete your collection of all things Shetland. And of course, tune in to BritBox to watch episode three came out yesterday i gotta get caught up i did i watched episode one and i need to watch two and three maybe this afternoon um last but not least we'll talk about that next episode i have to see what that is but this is we have just a couple of the um limited edition mug sets from red stag fiber make great gifts yep. you get five um mini skeins in here you get the cute little red stag mug. Again, limited edition. When they're gone, they're gone. There's like eight left. So snag them. Anyway, thanks for coming. Coming. Thanks for watching. If you are local, we will be closed, obviously, Thanksgiving. We're closing early today, which is Wednesday, but you're not going to see that. So that doesn't really <laughs> matter. It's fine. Fun fact. Um, <laughs> Friday and Saturday will be open our normal hours and of course our amazing amazing Black Friday Cyber Monday Small Business Saturday all of the above sale is going on I do encourage you to shop small we all buy enough crud from Amazon as it is yeah shop small whether it's us whether it's anybody else that you know there's a lot of if you are local there's a ton of shops downtown in Montgomery support them this year Small businesses need your help. Anywho, use the code THANKFUL, T-H-A-N-K-F-U-L, all caps. We went from math to spelling, guys, <laughs> all in one episode. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Yay. Um, to get 20% off your entire order, excluding Brooklyn Tweed and Shibui and needle sets. There's also fun freebies with certain levels of purchases, and it is our uh, free shipping on uh, $50 orders or more. Uh, please note that after Cyber Monday, so starting Tuesday, shipping prices have gone astronomical the past few weeks, and so our free shipping threshold will have to go up to 125 to get free shipping. So this will be the last time to get it under 100 Um so snag that, use the code. You can see all the details on our website and on Instagram, Facebook. We have all the details on the sale. It is live um, because if I say, I say live. If you're watching this Thursday or Friday, it's live. I doubt that Josh is going to put it up tonight. Anywho, that's 
beside the point. Happy Thanksgiving, you guys, and we hope we will see you in store or online. And uh, just have a great time with yeah. friends and family. Hopefully you get some good knitting time in. And uh, just enjoy, relax. Hopefully you get a good day off. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.